This is Radio TV Phono Nud, and we're currently in between projects, so to speak. I'm waiting on some parts to come in to repair a early 70s GE stereo and, and an old 1950s RCA oscilloscope. Those videos will be coming in the near future. So I thought while we're waiting for those parts to arrive, we'll talk about something else that might help you out in your repair work and what you might can do if you ever encounter this situation. What you see on the left here is a Type 5Y3 full wave vacuum tube rectifier. These are commonly used in radios and phonographs from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And there was also a 5U4 which is a basically a larger version of the same tube that will handle greater current capacity. It was used in a lot of television sets and hi-fi equipment, etc. Okay, the device on the right is a solid-state plug-in replacement that is designed to replace either a 5AR4, 5U4, or a 5Y3 rectifier tube. You know, basically the idea behind this was to eliminate the tube and replace it with a more modern rectification device, as in silicon diodes, that would supposedly create less heat that this tube would create. However, there are some issues with using a solid-state plug-in device such as this to replace a rectifier tube and I'll show you what those issues are with some measurements that we'll be taking momentarily but first let's look at a basic diagram of a tube rectification circuit and a solid state rectification circuit. The bottom diagram is the basic power supply circuit that you'll find in a in a old radio or record player etc. We have our power transformer that accepts 120 volts AC coming into it from the from the wall outlet. And then we have three separate secondary windings here. The bottom winding provides 6.3 volts AC to the other tube filaments in the set, which we don't even need to worry about that at this point. The top winding provides 5 volts AC to the tube filament of the 5Y3 or 5U4 or whatever happens to be in your set. And this big center tap winding here is normally around 700 volt center tap, so we're applying about 350 volts AC to each plate of the rectifier tube. As you can see here, and I can see our 5 volt winding connects to the filament of the rectifier tube which also serves as the cathode. Okay, coming off of the filament here, we also have our rectified high DC voltage. Could be anywhere from 200 to 500, 600 volts, depending on the product. Here's our first filter capacitor, which is an electrolytic. And then we have our filter choke here, Sometimes there's a resistor here instead of a choke. And here's our second filter capacitor that these devices here smooth out the 120 hertz ripple that will be right here. And this RL, that's basically just the load of the radio or record player or whatever that the this power supply is supplying power to. Okay, look at the top diagram and I'm no artist by no sense of the word. We have our basic same configuration here, our power transformer receiving 120 volts AC input, 6.3 volt winding for the other tube filaments. Here's our 5 volt winding that would have been used for the rectifier tube filament, but since this is a since we have our solid state replacement plugged into here, this winding is not needed for anything because there's no filament in the solid state replacement. 
I tried to draw it here but really couldn't draw that small and make it look legible on the camera so disregard this so this is basically what the inside of this solid state replacement consists of we have two diodes in series here connected to this half of the high voltage winding we have two diodes in series here connected to this half of the high voltage winding and then they tie together here this is our anode connection of the diode this is our cathode connection the band here and if you were using standard 1N4007 diodes for this application our cathode would be noted by a silver band or black band on the diode it's usually a silver band on modern diodes and then just like in the and then here's our filter network just like in the tube circuit that I showed below okay now let's scrounge up something an old radio or whatever that uses a 5Y3 rectifier and we are going to take some voltage and current measurements between the tube rectifier and the solid state rectifier and then we'll analyze our results as you can see I have our little chart here ready to fill out we'll measure our turn on surge current which will be measured at the AC input we'll be measuring our operational current which will mean the amount of current that the radio or whatever draws while it's in operation that will also be measured at the AC input we'll be measuring our B plus current and the way we'll do that is we'll break the uh, B plus connection here at the cathode of the rectifier and insert our DC ammeter here see how much current we're drawing there and we'll measure our turn on B plus surge voltage which will be measured right here at the cathode of the rectifier using our DC voltmeter with respect to ground there and then lastly we will measure our operational B plus voltage which means the amount of voltage that will be read here on the meter once all the tubes warm up and the set is operating and we will make those readings for both the tube rectifier and solid state rectifier and then we will determine which one is better for use in our particular product here's the radio we'll be using a mid 30's Crosley it still needs some restoration work done on it but more on that in another video but it, it works good enough for this test we've been wearing it the last couple of years and, uh... and as you can hear it plays okay we'll make all of our measurements with the tube rectifier first and then with the solid state and to measure our turn on surge current and our operational current that'll be easy we'll just use the current meter on our AC power supply here okay here we go a little over 400 milliamp ears and as the set warms up we're running about the same thing a little over 400 milliamp here now we'll check our DC surge voltage and operational B plus voltage connected to the we'll be measuring from the cathode of the rectifier in respect to chassis ground we have our DC meter on the on the thousand volt scale just so that'll give us ample enough tolerance okay let's see what happens
Jump up to about 393. Okay, 393 surge voltage and about 170 operational voltage. Now we'll check our B plus operational current and surge current. I forgot to make a column for surge current, but I'll make a little notation there. And to do that, we have our ammeter connected between, we have the connection broken between the output of the rectifier and the input of the first filter capacitor and we have the meter placed in circuit there and we have it set to the 200 milliamp -ear range okay so let's see what happens Okay, what's going on here? Okay, for some reason the fuse was blown in my meter. Let's try this again. And as you can see, that was bouncing around all over the place. That's probably due to various stages of the, of the receiver placing a different load on the power supply. So we'll go with the highest reading, which was about 24 milliamps. And as you can see, we have the solid state plug-in installed. I'll make the same measurements that I made with the tube rectifier, so I'll do that now and I'll report back with my findings and then we'll analyze the results. I will show one thing as far as measuring the surge voltage coming off of the solid state rectifier as I turn the set on. With the tube rectifier, yes, there was a surge voltage, but it didn't jump up instantly because the tube filament had to warm up. I anticipate when I flip the power switch on that our surge voltage is going to jump way up there with this solid state rectifier. So let's flip the switch and see what happens. Four hundred volts, four hundred and six volts we might say. So Okay, let's take a look at our facts and figures. Uh, turn on surge current measured at the AC line, 400 MA for the tube rectifier, 600 for solid state. Operational current measured at the AC input, 420 MA versus 450 MA for the solid state. B plus current, and this is where things get really interesting. 24 milliamp ears for the tube rectifier and 43 milliamp ears for the solid state rectifier and there was a brief turn on surge current detected at the solid state rectifier which is not really present on the tube rectifier because the tube has to warm up for a few seconds solid state gives you instant voltage which more about that in a minute uh, turn on B plus voltage, which in other words is our surge voltage measured as soon as the power was turned on. 393 volts for the tube rectifier after the filament warmed up for a few seconds. 
and an instantaneous bam bam 408 volts with a solid state rectifier. Operational B plus voltage which is our measured voltage once the radio warms up and is playing 170 volts for the tube rectifier 200 volts for the solid state. Now to some people that might not seem like much of a difference but that's actually a big deal here. And if this plug-in solid state rectifier was used in a high current device such as a a power amplifier or TV set etc the, the results could be much worse than what they are here. Now take notice of our operational B plus voltage 170 versus 200 well that's a 30 volt increase of B plus voltage with the solid state rectifier and when our B plus voltage goes up that means the current draw on the B plus line goes up that's the reason we have 24 milliamp ears for the tube rectifier versus 43 milliamp ears for the solid state and that also means that our various stages in the radio especially the high current draw audio output stage is going to conduct harder, it's going to run hotter and that's just not good. In fact I was talking to a technician the other day where someone brought in a big power amplifier with a solid state plug-in replacement rectifier and he said the B plus voltage on that unit was so much higher that it threw the bias voltage on the audio output tubes off so much that it caused the audio output tubes to self-destruct. And also when our B plus current is higher and that means more current is going to be drawn through the power transformer. Now today's modern power transformers are designed to take such abuse but an 80 year old transformer in a, in a radio or amplifier or whatever is not something that I would want to subject to undue stress because they are expensive and difficult to replace if you can even get a replacement. Also, notice this surge current that I have noted for the solid state rectifier. What's happening here is when power is first applied and voltage comes out of the solid state rectifier, which is instant, and once that voltage hits the filter capacitors, those filter capacitors act like a dead short for a, a few milliseconds. So in other words, what that's doing is effectively shorting the B plus voltage to ground, which is further placing stress on the diodes and the power transformer. And like I just said, we don't want to place any stress on the transformer that's unnecessary. And we don't want to place any stress on the diodes because if they short, they could very well burn up the transformer. And once again, modern day equipment that uses solid state devices contain components that are designed to withstand such surges. Now one way we can get around this over voltage and over current problem is to install a resistor in the B plus line as in between the output of the rectifier and the input of the first filter capacitor but in many cases, especially in high current, high voltage devices such as TVs and high powered amplifiers, the power resistor will have to be a large high wattage device, which many times is physically too big to safely mount anywhere on the chassis so where, it, so where the heat from it doesn't damage other things. And another thing to consider is, especially in high powered amplifiers, is the tube rectifier is not instantaneous. It has to warm up for a few seconds before voltage is produced from it. This solid state rectifier is bam, bam, bam. As soon as you turn it on, it has full voltage output. Now that can be a problem with 
audio output tubes because in many cases if high plate voltage is applied to the tube before the filament has time to warm up then that could damage the the tube and you don't want that audio tubes are often very expensive with a tube rectifier that's soft starting the tube filament and your other tubes have a chance to warm up a little bit before they see B before the tube sees a B plus voltage and there's also more of a chance of these solid state diodes shorting I've been doing this for close to 30 years and I've replaced tons of shorted rectifier diodes and that's usually caused by power surges and lightning now a tube rectifier is much more forgiving yes they can short especially the 6x4 and 6x5 types but generally they won't self-destruct if a power surge comes in on the AC line you'll notice here they have two diodes in series and the reason they did that is to offer a little bit of means of protection in case one diode shorts you have another one to fall back on but there's still there's still too much risk there for me to be happy so my advice if you run into one of these jokers plugged into a tube d tube radio or phonograph or amplifier or TV or whatever pull it out throw it away and install the proper rectifier tube most rectifier tubes are not that hard to find today so you know there's no need in leaving this in there that might possibly cause damage down the road in fact this little jewel was pulled out of a Hammond organ amplifier that I was asked to work on that was heavily stressed out because of the excessive B plus voltage and excessive current draw on the B plus line and I've worked on later organ amplifiers and later pieces of tube equipment that used silicon solid state diodes but that equipment was new enough that it was designed around those diodes so you know in a case like that there's nothing to worry about because the equipment was designed to work with those diodes when this old stuff was made silicon diodes were not even heard of so you know it, it was designed to work with a tube rectifier and and that's what you should use now, some items during the tube era use a selenium rectifier that's an earlier form of solid state device but it's still not as efficient as a silicon diode and you can replace a selenium rectifier with a silicon diode but you still need to use a dropping resistor in order to get the B plus voltage down okay I hope you got something out of all of this and that you know a little bit more about these than you did before we started and more to come later